that one. Yeah, we talked to God. That's right. Oh my gosh. I wanna, anybody's gonna come on because I'm so late. Um, yeah, you're right. Hello, Delphine. How are you? Miss you. I pray everything is well and you're feeling well and everything's fine with you. I may just go ahead and change it to 7 30. Uh, because I mean, later, later, Bible study was really, really good today. Uh, uh, let me check the volume. Pardon me. All right, now my volume is up. All right. All right. Now we should be ready to go. As long as my Wi Fi holds out. And we did, I did test it earlier, so. Hey, Sister Brother Sonny, Diane, good to see you, cuz. Eddie Burks, God bless you, man. I am later than normal. Uh, Bible study came over. I'm still debating whether to do it. I might wait till we do the live streaming, uh, we get all that connected, and then do the whole Bible study together with the prayer service because uh, we're getting some really, really good stuff. We're studying studying Second Samuel. We finished First Samuel. We're studying Second Samuel. And the last three chapters, somebody got murdered every chapter. We did three chapters today, and five people died. Murdered, killed, whatever. And it's amazing uh, the stuff that you learn when you really dig into the Word. So, uh -uh. Sonny, I want you to, I'm going to call you real, probably if not this evening, tomorrow. I got something I need to talk to you and OC about. We are going to have our church cookout June the 4th. We're not going to wait till the end of the summer this year. We're going to do it June the 4th. Hey, Violet, how are you? We're going to do it June the 4th where we're going to feed the community like we used to do at the other building. We're going to have a tent. We're going to probably get bouncy houses and, and, and uh, some social service people to be here, blood pressure hopefully. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Sonny. Maybe we can get Umadop to come again this year. Blood pressure screening, uh, sugar screening, all of that. I'll be sending out more information about that, but I want everybody to come, enjoy. The food is free. Free is good. Prayer, oh, she wants me to move. She's telling me to move on to prayer. All right. That's my commercial for today. Today, I want to talk about forgiveness. A good pastor friend of mine, Pastor Arthur Battle of GCDC, once said, Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the cell that we put ourselves in. If you sit down and you think about that a little bit, it makes a whole lot of sense. Because when you don't forgive people, you lock yourself up in a jail cell, suffering, while that other person then forgot all about you. But if you get forgiveness is the key that lets you unlock the cell that you're in to get out to have your freedom again. I've been locked in a cell before because there was people that I didn't want to forgive. Hallelujah. People that you hold on to for years and years and years, and you don't want to let it go. But in the reality, you're not hurting them, you're hurting yourself. So forgiveness is the key. When you start learning how to forgive, it's the key to unlock the cell that you put yourself into. And I, that's a profound statement. When he said that to me, I kept a note of it. And I wrote it down because I think it means a lot. Forgiveness. God is ready and waiting to forgive anyone who asks. See, the reality is some of us don't even go to God to ask forgiveness for ourselves. And so what the, what the, what the word says in Psalm 86, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. So he said he's ready, he's merciful to forgive, and all you got to do is ask him. Amen. Humble yourself and ask God to forgive you. Because we, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I ain't no different than anybody else on this broadcast or anybody in this room. There's things I don't ask God to forgive me for that I don't want you to know anything about. I don't want to know nobody. Now, that closet is locked up, and I've thrown away the key because I don't want nobody to know what's in that closet of the sins that I've committed in my past. But in the reality is, though, I asked God to forgive me, and when I asked him, he forgave me. Bless you, preacher. God, see you. See you on tonight. 
uh, Pastor Taylor. Uh, but a lot of us don't understand that he's waiting. He knows what you did. He knows the sins you committed. He knows the mess you created. He knows the problems you caused. He's just waiting for you to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner, but I heard about your amazing grace. And the reality is, it says in that word, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. God will always be waiting for us to return. Isaiah says, I blotted out your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Mm. The reality is we all belong to God. Amen. Until we sin, and sin causes separation. God wants us to renew our relationship with him. Renew it. Bring it back to where it needs to be. There is no possibility that Jesus will return anyone away who seeks forgiveness. John 6 and 37 says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Don't be afraid he's going to turn you away, because he won't. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants the best for you. He will never turn you away if you come to him with faith and with humility. See, that's the one thing you can hang your hat on. God loves you in spite of you. God loves you no matter what you've done. He still loves you. All he does is wait for you to come back to him. Yes. And, it's, and then I wrote in a, what if I'm having trouble with forgiving somebody else? Anybody here ever had trouble forgiving somebody else? Or something that they did to you? Something they said about you? Some, some knife that they put in your back? Some, some mess that they created in your family and you have a hard time forgiving? What, what, what does the word say? Matthew 6 and 14 starts. It says, For ye, if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So you gain by forgiving somebody else. Oh, wow. Wow. So you mean I'll be blessed if I forgive somebody else that did wrong to me. Wow. You get you gain by forgiving somebody else. That's what that word is saying. But if you don't, then you're liable to miss out on what God has for you. I don't want to miss out on anything that God wants to give me. I'm greedy. Mm. Yeah, I'm greedy. I want everything that God has for me in that great storehouse up in heaven. I want everything that God has for me in my great chest that he has for me because I done missed out on so much other stuff because I was disobedient and didn't want to listen. So now I don't want to miss out on anything that God has waiting for me up in glory because I know he wants to give it to me. See, the reality is God wants to give you everything that you want. I'm preaching to somebody today. I know it's hard, Delphine. I know. That's the hardest thing. He said, love your enemies that despitefully use you. Forgive those that abuse you. Hard. I ain't say it was easy. Hard. It was hard for me when I had to do it. And I, You've heard it, Delphine. I know you've heard the story. I, I, I hated my dad for 40 years. 40 years hated him. Said if I saw him, I was going to punch him in the face. Because he was never in my life didn't mean anything to me but I forgave him went to his went to his house in San Antonio I got to his house I looked at him he's in a wheelchair he got a trach in his throat can barely breathe can rather talk and I said to myself at that point what good would it do for me to show this man hatred and anger when God has already punished him See, the reality is God will take care of your enemies. You ain't got to do nothing. God already suffered him because as soon as he saw me, the first thing he did was he started crying. And all those years, I lived with that anger that was hurting me. Think about it. So you're not, that's why it's great to forgive because when you do that, it blesses you and it kind of releases the other person. And when you release them, maybe then, they can see the God in you and come to God themselves. Oh, hallelujah. Can you imagine that? Somebody you hated, somebody did you wrong, you show them love, and then after you show them love, they come to Christ. You didn't know that, but you're preaching right there. 
You're being a witness right there because you're not only telling them, but you're showing them. See, it's easy to say something with your mouth, but it's harder to show them with your actions. So you can show them how much you love God. You can show them how God has changed you by what you do and, and what you say. Amen? All right, all right, all right. I'm going to harp on that one Ephesians 4 and 32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. The ultimate sacrifice that Christ did on the cross, he did that so that his father could forgive us. Think about it. Up until that point, people that were trying to get into the body of Christ had failed because they couldn't live up to the standards uh, that they had in the Old Testament. But Jesus came and he says, I'm going to take care of that for you. I'm going to be the perpetuation of your sin. So when you sin, you have an out through me. So why would we hold somebody else accountable for stuff that when God isn't holding us accountable for stuff we've done? Um, I, mean, I, would, I didn't know that God would feed me the way he is tonight, but he is. First uh, John said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you got to confess. You got to be honest with God. You don't have to be honest with me. People lie to me all the time. Oh, yeah, they do. I'm a preacher and a pastor, but people lie to me all the time. But it doesn't matter. The person we got to be truly honest with is God. Because I tell people, you can fool me every day of the week, but you can't fool God. He knows your heart. Amen. So when you go to God, be honest with God. Nobody else has to hear it. You got to tell nobody else what you said to him, but be honest with God. If you're honest with God, God will, will, will hear your cry, hear your prayer, and encourage you to forgive. Forgiveness is hard. It's one of the hardest things I've ever really had to do. Forgive somebody I know messed over me. Forgive somebody that I know didn't care about me. Forgive somebody that tried to hurt me or my family. But God says we must do it in order for him to forgive us. Matthew 18 and 21 says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often should I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He said, 70 times 7. Jesus said to him, I'm not, un I shall not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. I think I did the most, the, 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 and Gary, you're on, you tell me what that amounts to. You, you, you the mathematician in the group. Uh, 70 times, I did the math one day. It's a lot of times that we're supposed to forgive. Amen. It's a lot of times. Because if you think back, how many times has God forgiven you? Ooh. You ain't got to give the number. Just, just wave your hand right now. Just wave your hand. You ain't got to say a number. Just wave your hand because you know what I'm talking about. How many times has God actually had to forgive you? And that's your story. And that's you can say for yourself. But if you say that, then understand how the concept is, how we're supposed to try to forgive other people. Amen. It's Luke 6 and 27. But I say unto you which hear. Uh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> I say to you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. I know, I, Delphine, I can hear you. I can see your face right now. Yeah. I can see you now. You're, you're squinched up and said, Lord, help me. Amen. And I, I've had to say, Lord, help me too. But he says in here, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. I want you to try this. Somebody you know don't like you, just be nice to them. Speak to them. Say hello. Make them say hello to you. Say hello. And you'll be surprised that after some time, they'll say hello back. You'll change their disposition by your position. I've said that in a sermon one time. Change, you'll change their disposition by your position with God. Because they can truly see that you're, you're not just talking it, you're walking it. And even though you know that they don't like you, you know, they have an alt against you, show them kindness. If you show somebody love and kindness, it may take time. But you've done your part in what God has called you to do. The reality is everybody ain't going to like you. 
Some people don't like you just because they don't like you. They don't even know you, but they don't like you. They don't like you because the way you wear your hair. They don't like you because they think you bougie. They don't, and I've been told I was bougie. They don't like you because they think that you think you all that. And really, in your mind, you're just living your life. Some people don't like you just because they don't like you. But, and you're right, they don't like the God in you. I talked about that tonight in Bible study. David had favor. Uh, but when you get the favor of God in your life, and David had confidence in what he was doing because he had God's favor. And when you got favor in your life, everybody not going to like it. David was winning battles. David was taking over kingdoms because he had God's favor. People are mad at you because they can see God's favor in your life. Oh, hallelujah. They can see God moving in your life. They can see God blessing your life. And so they mad at you because they can see the favor in your life and can't understand how God is blessing you. And all you can say, ain't nobody but the Lord. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? So don't, don't worry about people getting jealous and all that. They're gonna, they're gonna be, people are going to be like that. You have to do your part and show love anyhow. Hard to do. Easy to say. And the last one I got is Romans 3 and 23. And everybody know this scripture. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's for everybody. Keisha, Delphine, Diane, God has favor over your life. And don't worry about what nobody says. When they see you rise up, when God elevates you, just wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Because you know that it's because your faith and your belief in God is what got you there. Nobody else is what got you there. You didn't have to pay nobody. You didn't have to kiss nobody's behind. It was because you believed and God saw your belief and saw your faith. And he said, I'm going to bless you because you believe in me and you are my child. And because you are his child, everything you do, he will bless. He will bless you. He will bless your family. He will elevate you. He'll give you what you need and for what and what you want. Because he knows that you belong to him. And the one thing David did, he worshiped the God that he loved. I beg you, don't stop worshiping your God and give him the glory and give him the acknowledgement once you receive that which he gives you. When God, and see, the thing that we learned today, too, when God blessed David, the first thing David did, he says, he got on his knees and he blessed God for providing him the victory. He blessed God for providing him all the things that he had. He gave God the glory. We cannot ever forget that when God elevates us to give him the glory and mean it because it ain't about you. It ain't really ever about you. It's about God. Everything that I have, everything I've ever had is because God gave it to me. When we start thinking we do it ourselves, it's usually when we mess up. Amen. That's my, my talk, my teaching for today on forgiveness. God bless you, Sister Jimmy. Amen. Uh, but I want you to really grab a hold of that. Forgiveness is one of the hardest things for a person to do. Because when people, I used to say, I didn't get mad, I got even. That was my mantra. I ain't getting mad, I'm getting even. You mess up with me, I'm going to get you back. And I've done that before. And when I got them back, I got them worse than they got me. That was my mindset until God changed it. If somebody does something to me wrong, I go to God, and I say, God, you take care of that for me because I can't waste time on simple-minded people. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to waste your time and your energy trying to mess around with folk that don't know him and don't really care about you. All the devil wants you to do is waste your time when you can be focused on the things that God has given you to focus on. Amen? Focus on things of high altitude and not low altitude. Some people want you to be exactly where they are. They ain't nobody and they want you to be nobody. They don't know God and they don't want you to be have a good relationship with God. So they cause stuff in your life. So love on them anyhow and forgive them and keep it moving. And then you are doing the right thing. Amen. Prayer list. Uh, Rita Balthazar family and friend who husband is Ronnie, who I was in the Marine Corps with, living, leaving Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
He's had some surgery and her sister has some surgery. We're praying for both of them at this time. Kathy Cornette, Dorothy Gray, Barbara Nix, Rena Martin, Gina Collins, Mother Glover, who's here tonight, God bless you. Marsha Madison, I see you on tonight. God bless you, Marsha. You know that God has an anointing over your life. I ain't even got to tell you that. Amen. God has a blessing around the corner for you all the time. Uh, Lee Madison, my wife, uh, Deacon Cardell Mallett, praying for you, my brother. Dana Hunter, Brett Hunter, Bonita Hunter, Juanita Madison, Rosemond Lee, Gwen Jones, Teresa Brown, Sharon Lee, Pastor Shanks, Felix Campbell, Kevin and Flint, Shirley Thompson's daughter, Renita Taylor, Mother Aline Harris, Helen Bird, Jimmy Williams, who's on tonight. God bless you, Sister Jimmy. Glad you're feeling better. Deacon Herb, who's here tonight. Herb Flowers here tonight, feeling better. Elaine, Brandon, Diane Hunter, Eddie Ruben Burst. God bless you, Eddie. Continues in prayer for you. Tyrone Patrick, Corliss Crowder, Bonda Hodges. Deacon Eddie Nash, Pastor Strong and his mother, Deacon James Buckingham and his wife, Isla, uh, Janetta Smith, Sister Shirley McCaster, happy birthday again, Shirley, praying for your healing. My mother, uh, Marilyn Loma, Sharon Hall, Alicia Davis, uh, uh, Stephen Davis, Darnell Moody, Charlotte Robinson, Mother Mays, uh, the rest of the mothers, Mother Ingram, Mother, Mother Thompson, O.C. Ballard, Sonny Edwards, Gilbert Young, Joe Simmons and family, Paula Hicks Hudson, Tamika Buckingham, Tariva Taylor, Dashi Jaden, Kimberly Rochelle, Brenda McFall, Jennifer Close, Deb Ramsey, <coughs> Reverend Earl and Wanda Buckingham, Lorenzo Buckingham, Diane and Susie Whitecliffe, God bless you, Diane, uh, Deacon Archie Lewis and family, God bless you, Deacon, he's here, here tonight, Deacon Charles and Deborah Gibbon, Reverend Walton, his aunts, Corrine Wheeler, Henrietta Taylor, Aunt Molly, uh, Raymond Corrigans, Nate and Martha Willis, Hazel Bester, Dwayne Hammond and family, Denisa Boyd, Lucinda Sharp, Carmen Morgan, Bruce Watson, Violet Terry, the Thompson family, Dana Marcus Pickett, Denise Perky, Jody Lambert Solis, uh, glad your surgery came out okay, Rick Zickafoos, uh, Pastor Bill Russell family uh, and his church family down in Texas, James Dickerson, Keisha Bowen and family, Dorothy Brewer, uh, my children, my grandchildren, TJ, Tish, Marvin, Faith, and Armani, Doris and Terry Neal, Tanya Smith, Tequila Church, and Patricia Garrett. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your words of encouragement. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We know today, God, that we need to learn to forgive. We want you to, I want you to put in every heart Put in every mind the spirit of forgiveness. I know sometimes, God, it's not easy for those to forgive. It wasn't easy for me. But because you touched me, because you spoke to me, it changed my mindset. I ask right now that you change mindsets tonight, that you break yokes, because when you can't forgive, it may be a yoke holding somebody back from getting a closer relationship with you. I ask that you break yokes, you deliver tonight, that you lift up heads tonight, that you reach out of, the, out of this church tonight and go to every home right now. Touch Sister Delphine, touch Marsha Madison, touch uh, Keisha Bowen, touch all the people that are watching tonight, God, that need you in their lives. Somebody here tonight, God, needs you to step in and do something special. Step in and do something miraculous. Step in and elevate them to a higher level. Step in and feed them, Father, with something in their spirit and something in their heart. Somebody needs you tonight to touch their bodies and heal their bodies tonight. I want you to move with all power in your hands. Send your angels, if you can't be there yourself, and touch and deliver tonight. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs just a word. Somebody needs you to speak into their spirit. Somebody needs to know that they're going to make it to tomorrow. Somebody needs to know that what they said to them yesterday at work ain't going to stick with them, oh God. Somebody needs to know that they're going to make it and you're going to get them through to see another day. I'm asking not just for a week, but just for tomorrow. Give them daily bread. Give them fresh oil. Give them what they need, Father, that they can survive 
These are tough times. We're living in a tough world. But I know that you created the world and you can manage the world for us if we believe and trust in you. I ask people to grow in faith tonight, that they believe to trust in you more. I ask that they grow in faith tonight, that they put aside every weight and everything that's holding them back from building a strong relationship with you, God. I ask that they move aside everything that's holding them back from getting into your ark of protection. Bless tonight. Move tonight. Lift up, bow down heads tonight. Give encouragement tonight to those that need you in their homes and in their lives. I believe that if we trust you, God, you do exactly what you said. You said you never leave us or forsake us, and you never let your seed go begging bread. I'm glad that I'm your seed, and I'm glad that the people that are on tonight are your seed, and you'll never not take care of us. Bless us tonight. Bless every family tonight that's watching. Bless all those that will be in church Sunday. Bless whatever church they go to. Bless that pastor, oh God. I'm not a selfish pastor. I bless every church and every pastor that preaches your word. Bless every person that believes in you in their heart. And if they don't have you in their heart, go in their heart and have them receive you, God, for themselves. The reality is, and I found this out for myself, the more I believe and the more I trust, the more you give me. Just like I said, God, bless us like you blessed David. Bless us and elevate us like you elevated David. Bless us and bless our families like you blessed David's family. I believe you did it then and you can do it now. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give God the glory tonight for every word that's been spoken and every prayer that's been prayed because I know that he's the one that feeds us what we need. Bless tonight in the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. And thank God. Sister Thompson, God bless you. I ask that God continue to bless you and your family. Sister Bowen, God bless you. God is already elevating you. You want? God is already elevating you. Sister Bowie, God is elevating Diane Whitecliffe. God is blessing you. Continue to be faithful. Continue to trust God. And God will continue to bless you. I'm a firm believer. I got confidence that whatever I want from God, whatever I need from God, because I believe in God, God will supply my every need. I told somebody today that we had a person, another pastor, come in to look at our new building. And he kept telling me, Pastor, what a great job you've done. Pastor, this is a great a thing for you. And I said, no, it's not about me. It's about God. Everything that we've accomplished here, we're going to accomplish here because God has an anointing on this place and on the people of God. God has an anointing over you. You just have to open it up and use it and receive it. I believe that. If you believe, you can receive. Just keep believing and keep trusting. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday, 11 o'clock. I have a good word. Oh, I got one I'm working on. I think you'll enjoy. Amen. I hope you received last Sunday. Amen. God wants 100 proof of your fire for him. He wants you to be on fire. If you lost that fire, talk to him, and he'll give it back to you. Come worship with us, and I hope you get it back. Amen. Because I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm never going to stop. I'm never going to give up. God bless you, Brother Burks. Amen. Uh, so we pray that you receive this in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a great evening. Amen. And we'll see you Sunday. We're preparing for our Easter. We're going to have Easter egg hunt the Saturday before Easter. And then we're going to have Easter service and children are going to do speeches. If you haven't got a speech for your child or grandchild, it may already be too late. But check with Sister Lee or the First Lady if you want one for your child or your grandchild. Uh, we are going to have an Easter egg hunt. And like I said earlier, we're going to have our church picnic on June the 4th out here in our parking lot. You're right, 99 and a half won't do, Brother Edwards. I said that Sunday. Amen. God wants all of us, all part of us. And uh, so we're going to prepare for that. Uh, if you're a church member, contact uh, me or Deacon Gibbon, and we'll tell you what what we need you to do. Amen. Uh, we're looking forward to that. This is going to be our 
I kind of uh, welcome ourselves to the community and let them know who we are. Amen. We're going to feed everybody for free uh, like we always do. Praise team going to sing, and we're going to have uh, bouncy houses and stuff for children. God bless you. Have a great evening. I'll see you Sunday.